So, Ms. Claire Jones, welcome to Hangout Cafe. Thank you so, so much. Um, okay, there's no difference. Thank you as so, so much. As they say, the apprentice, thanks for having me, Mr. Shinny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. right. Okay. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Really do appreciate you. Um, I know that um, having Lulu on last week encouraged you to come on, even though you had said to me uh, before that you were going to come on. What? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a very, very... Uh, very, very interesting and uh by us some of it uh i you can actually relate to like, like i said i can relate to some of what he spoke about in the past uh yeah i, I can in my younger years yeah i can okay i think i'm sorry i'm going to have to put back the headpiece because i could hear you better with it when i had it on okay I'm going to put it better. Okay. So, yes, you said having Lulu, listening to Lulu last week was. Okay. You're saying that having Lulu last week? Oh, yeah. So, having Lulu last week was actually good because I can relate to some of the things he spoke about, um, which I'll probably talk about some of them today as well. But um, it was okay. very. He, he made himself very vulnerable, which made the yeah. the whole presentation very genuine. Um, it's very yeah. hard to get people that are bold enough to come and say what he said online. Mm. Um, and I think mm. uh, I think the power in his testimony was his vulnerability. Yeah. Personally, yeah. Um, yeah. he it was a bold move. Oh, yeah. like, I like that it was a bold I, move. I know Lulu is on it was today. A bold move, yeah. he's, he's just yeah. joined. He it was joined definitely us, so. bold. Yeah, Lodi, thank you so much again. <laughs> yeah. Lodi, thank you so much again um, for last week. And I'm super excited that um, Ade is on today. And hopefully next week we'll have another gentleman. Um, there's somebody that's on now that I'm hoping he'll come on to next week. But we'll, I'll talk about, I'll have a word with him afterwards. But so, Mr. Jobs. Yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do? For those who don't know, I know you have a lot of your fans on, but for those who don't know, you, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, my uh, name is um, Adi Ojomo. Uh, most of you call me OJ. Um, uh, I'm from a management consulting background. Um, I, I sort of thank God every day for the profession because it's helped me both not just professionally, but even in my personal life, some of the the trainings and some of the skills, um, I just reflect each day and I say, you know, thank thank God daily for actually putting me in that line of profession. Um, I've learned a lot. It's helped me quite a lot, I'll be honest with you. I've been in the management consulting field for over 20 years now. I'm still in the field and um, probably remain there for quite a while, so... That's my background. I'm married okay. to Funola Jomo, and I have three wonderful kids, uh, Afope, Ife, and Iyanu. My disclaimer has already gone out, so don't <laughs> hate me after today's session. <laughs> <laughs> and Iyanu, remember, uh, I'm they, actually they would kids, so I uh, remember. <laughs> 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 So, so you just have to love me. Yeah, so not to worry. They will still love you. They will still love you. Not only like you, they will love you. <laughs> and I, I mean, what, I wonder, where is Mrs. O'Jobs? Because somebody sent her a message. You let her come on now so that she can hear what her husband has to say. <laughs> but yeah, so today we're talking. Is she out? They she probably out? heard most of it anyway, so it's fine. Okay. <laughs> So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about beyond distractions, um, focusing in the chaotic world. Um, I'm sure as both of you know that the world in which we live in now is very, very chaotic. And um, it takes a lot of grace to try to stay focused 
with all the numerous distractions. And they come, these distractions come from everywhere, within and outside. So today, um, Ideal Jamo is going to be sharing from his own personal experience and also from um, others, um, things that he's observed elsewhere. So Mr. Ojoms, where do you want to start from? Uh, Let's talk about the think, chaos. Uh, give us that intro yeah, to the chaos. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think when we, when we had a tete-a-tete -tete about what to talk about, and you're quite yeah. right that there's chaos everywhere, um, just to make sure that we're sort of comfortable I mean, where did chaos yeah. start from? And, you know, we have, we have that popular story of the creation where um, God decided to send the Holy Spirit down to earth. There was no form. There was no structure. And everything was under chaos. And the Holy Spirit came down yeah. and within seven days brought yeah. some form of structure and order to society. But unfortunately, um, yeah. Adam and Eve spoiled that structure by, you know, eating the apple. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> from a, a, a world of structure order we yeah. find ourselves in a world, a world of no structure no form and chaos yeah um god in his mercy decides probably 400 years later that you know, these guys are going to kill themselves because from the garden of eden up to malachi we can see the chaos the lack of order the lack of structure because of sin and so many different things right. but then people still have to operate within that framework of chaos yeah. You know, and you can see those that decided to hold on to God were able to navigate through the, the chaos. And those that refused to hold on to God found it difficult to navigate through the chaos. And then, of course, um, when Jesus came, God is now saying, look, I'm giving you guys another opportunity to at least find a way in which you can navigate through the chaos. Yeah. Um, by, you know, they talk about Jesus coming to give us light and light is associated with knowledge. So the question is, you know, what, what basis of knowledge are we chasing? Because at the end of the day, we're not perfect. Let's just, I mean, that's my disclaimer, number one. I'm talking to you as an imperfect person. Okay. You know, I'm talking to you based on my experience, based on learning from other people. Yeah. Um, I, I, I personally believe, my belief system believes that one of the main reasons why Jesus came was to help us to focus. We're in a society where there's chaos, like you quite rightly mentioned. Yeah. It's going to remain chaotic until Jesus comes. So the question is, how do we how do navigate we through this chaos? Yeah. Um, there's no, as I said, I'm not perfect. And I need people to join me. There's no perfect child. <laughs> there's no perfect wife. There's no perfect church. Pastor. There's basically, there's no, no one is perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody is perfect. But yeah. for his mercy, mm -hmm. um, he has told us that we, can, we, all, we all see through a dark mirror. But yeah. then on that special day, when he comes back, we can see perfection. Yeah. So that's the background that, look, we're in a chaotic society and we've yeah. got to find a way to navigate, navigate it as a husband, navigate it as a wife, children, yeah. you know, in whatever area we find ourselves. Right. I personally think we have to come up with a, I mean, it's like the 80-20 rule, isn't it? You know, 80-20, mm. mm. you know, you, you see the 80% in your husband or wife and you're yeah. looking for the remaining 20%. You abandon that relationship only yeah. to lose eighty percent. So yeah. it's a bit like that, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. You know. Fantastic. Thank you for giving us an overview. Um, we get we regards to how this chaos even started. So now let's go and um, relate this to your experience, personal experience. I know you said you're going to actually touch on three major three main areas: uh, money, sex, and food. So start us off wherever you want to start from. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to bed. I'm going to talk about <laughs> sex now. So. <laughs> um, uh, oh, actually, let me give a disclaimer. Please, anybody that's under 18, if you've got children, listen. Please, can you please let them... Um, Timmy, can I put a disclaimer for them, please? No, nah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. They, they can listen because they, I, I think everybody will learn from me. I mean, I'm learning every day. I think that's the, that's the reason why we have this thing called the growth process yeah. um, growth is the process by which we learn daily on how to navigate these distractions and these focuses they're, they're there to stay so we better learn how to, to embrace it or to resist it yeah, um, yeah um, so you said money, sex and what was the third one? Food food yeah yeah okay um, I think you asked me why, why these three areas and it's simple I think years ago 
um, in my local church. We were having an informal session, the men. Okay. And we're just sort of bouncing off, you know, areas, you know, of concern. You know, of course, it's going to be about marriage. It's going to be about children. It's going to be about finances. Mm -hmm. And the common theme was really those areas, um, money, sex, and food. So actually, and sorry, before you go on, let me ask. It, does that mean that that's what you men talk about? You said it was at the men's forum. So is that what men talk about? Money, sex, and food? Are there well, three those, things men talk about? Well, those, if you, you know, maybe when, when I give an example of some of the stories, then maybe you'll understand it's, you know, things come in threes. You don't want to make it ten things. So, <laughs> so money, sex, or food tend to be the main things okay. that we discuss, yes. Men, the, the men on, on, on the uh, platform, please type I agree or disagree so that we know whether, I, okay, well, go on. <laughs> yeah, as I said, when, when we started the conversation, I'm speaking based on my own experience. <laughs> some will agree, some will not agree. But unfortunately, years ago, that was the three things we were talking about. But the, the senior pastor of my local church, yeah. who, who was sort of facilitating the discussion, yeah. he said something which stuck to, to, stuck to my to, stuck to my sort of brain for a very, very many, many number of years. And he yes. was saying that as a, as a man, or he was just explaining that um, if you don't have mastery of these areas in terms of discipline and focus, yes. your life will be chaotic. Mm -hmm. So he said, you know, discipline. If there's no discipline over food, over sex, over money, yeah. there will be chaos in your life. And, and actually, when I look at my life, or when I have discussions with my friends and we identify chaotic situations in our lives yeah. or distractions. It's definitely in those three areas. I mean, okay. there's no doubt that, you know, if the men are going to be honest or if they want to, you know, um, be honest and be real, you find out that it's in these three areas. Um, okay. um, and he said, that's part of growth is how do you, how, how do you implement control systems or how do you implement measures okay. to make sure that you have, you're never going to get full mastery over these areas, but you can put boundaries in place mm. um, to enable you to reduce the damage that this chaos and these distractions are going to cause. Okay. Uh, if you don't have any boundaries in place, then as we know, there are numerous examples of, of leaders, of people that have fallen down in these areas. Yeah. And yeah. food, money, sex. I mean, there's numerous examples out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I just believe personally that uh, we've identified the fact that chaos is here to stay. Distractions are always going to be there. Yeah. So how do we navigate until okay. it's time to go to a better place? Yeah. Great. Okay. So uh, go on. Let's talk about money first. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's a wise decision. To start with money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me know whether that's probably reaction when I'm going to survive to talk about sex or talk about food. Okay. Uh, the interesting thing about money is that, you know, I'm, I, I, I really want to be as honest as possible, yeah. you know, um, because another disclaimer is that I've really gone past in my life right now. It's not about earning brownie points or pleasing people. And that's why I can relate to what Lolu spoke about last week yeah. about, you know, he spoke about trying to please people in the past. And it hindered him from knowing who he really was. Mm. I mean, there was numerous nuggets he spoke about, but that was the key one, is that who, who am I? Yeah. One of the questions he asked, who am I, Lulu? Yeah. Who, who is the real Lulu I, I keep with? And, okay. and similar to who is the real Adeo Jomo? And yeah. the real Adeo, the real Adeo Jomo cannot be the real Adeo Jomo if I'm scared to speak mm. the truth, if I'm mm. scared to say what's on my mind, whether it's wrong or not, that's yeah. the whole purpose of growth. Yeah. You know, it's for me to be who I am. And along the way, if I'm making mistakes, for my friends, my family to guide me and tell me, well, I think you're wrong in that area. But if I'm trying to fake it, yeah. you know, by giving them something that I'm not, yeah. how, how do I grow? Because it means I'm growing on fallacy. I'm not growing on the real person that I am. Okay. Um, so when it comes to my narr narr narrative on money, now, with money, you can either bless people with money yeah. or you can exploit them, you know. Money can especially be a distraction when pride sets in. Um, and over the years, one thing I know about pride, it prevents you from, from seeing the truth. It blinds, it gives a blind spot all over the place. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you a true story. And 
I get very emotional when I, when I tell this story because um, God was showing me who I was at that point in time. Now, I never knew that I, I, I was arrogant and, pri- and had a sort of proud attitude at that point in time. I mean, I was working for Price Waterhouse Coopers. I was traveling all over the world, you know, spent one year in Canada, spent year in Tampa. You know, money wasn't an issue then. Um, so um, I remember uh, on this particular assignment in Canada, the money was good. Um, everything was paid for, accommodation, everything. So, of course, in my savings account, it was, you know, a fine balance was being built. Okay. Um, I remember a month, a month to the end of the, of the project, yeah. my friends, just honest concern, said, um, OJ, you know, your, your contract is coming to an end. Don't you think you should start looking? You know, it's just, you know, an innocent conversation. Now, I had two choices. I could have kept quiet yeah. and taken the advice. But, hey, little did I know that that element of uh, arrogance right. and, you know, being proud was still in me. And guess what? Right. Three or four words yeah. was my downfall. Mm. I said, I always get a contract. Mm. And I didn't know. I didn't know that I had actually opened up my, my wow. baby brain. Wow. And I said, I always get a contract. And my mm-hmm. friend said, mm, okay, no worries. Okay, we'll, we'll, re- we'll address this issue later on. Yeah. Anyway, the contract comes to an end. And of course, I had a fine balance in the bank account, so I didn't really bother about looking. Okay, come two weeks later, I get this call from another um, company who wanted to hire me for another one-year one year project. Yeah. I looked at the rate and the rate was just probably a hundred pounds a day less. And I said, Oh, I can't work for nothing less than <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Nothing less than to be honest, I didn't even know it was, you know, I just thought, Hey, I, I don't work for anything less than that. Okay, okay. Fine. Fair enough. And they said, okay, no worries. They called me back again and said, will I reconsider? I said, no. Okay. A month later, no job. I wrote, Loads and loads of applications. Nobody was responding. Wow. One month, two months, three months. Three months later, I start digging into my safety net. You know, because of course you have to pay school fees. Yeah. To cut the long story short, the fourth month I joined the prayer team because <laughs> I knew things were things were getting bad. I mean, the balance was going down and the school fees had to be paid. Five months, six months, seven months, eight months. Still no job. By the fifth month, I teamed up with somebody in the church who was going through the same thing. And we were coming to church every Friday from <laughs> 11 in the night to 3 a.m. in the morning, a vigil every night. Why am I telling this story? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, I'm laughing feel, so feel much. Feel free, I'm, I'm feel laughing. Feel you know what? I'm laughing. Because I'm thinking, yeah. so when all else failed, you turned to God, turned to prayer. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> but that's what the truth is that that's what a lot of us do that's what a lot of us do but go on yeah go on yeah so um i teamed up this guy says look um sorry for speaking here but oh you which means ah it don't it that time. It. <laughs> and i said i need a prayer partner to be praying and you know i don't just need any prayer partner i need somebody that can feel what i'm feeling right now and he agreed and we started praying every day okay for, so every friday but why am I telling this story? Is that God took me from the destruction of money mm. to the fact that without me, the money is literally means nothing. Mm. So I, I stopped worrying about the fact that I my I owed about seventy, eighty thousand pounds in debt. Wow. I was not even thinking about these things. And then when God finally thought, This guy, I've broken him enough. Okay, let me now start to restore him. I've got started to give me strategies on how to get myself out of the debt, how to live so a how, life where how long were you unemployed for? For about, about 12 to 18 months, I think. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This was and, real uh, humbling. God humbled yeah, yeah. you. I'm going to say, yeah. Yeah. It brought, let me say something which, again, is part of the discussion about for that period. I never even told the full story. And I'll be honest with you, at that point, the time Miles Moreau said, You got two to do as a husband. You, you either transfer fate or mm. you never transfer fear. Mm. Of course, I did tell them about it, so there wasn't an issue of trans of transmitting fear. Yeah. But at that you point either, in time, I wasn't even willing to share faith with anybody. Fear. Mm. Fear. 
of faith. Mm. And at that point in time, I wasn't in a position, I didn't want to share anything with anybody. I just wanted to get out of the it's doldrums. Different. So yeah. I didn't want my wife or my kids to worry about the fact that <laughs> their dad said, <laughs> you know, he's in dire straight. But I knew that I just had to hang on to God at that point in time because, you know, no one else is going to get me out of this. Right. Um, so as I said, five, six months later, I think around the eighth month, God now began, his mercy began to, to take shape. And how, how did it take shape? I rang up the mortgage company and I said, you know what? I, I've not had an income for eight months and I've noticed you haven't even called me and stuff like that. I said, Mr. John, we don't need to call you. Um, you've built enough capital on your mortgage base that you don't actually have to pay mortgage for one year. Oh, wow. And I, what do you mean? Wow. Says, because you, you started paying over the odds last year ah. and 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 listen at that point in time somebody gave me an advice and i was humble enough to receive the advice he says mr Jomo, why don't you pay your mortgage every week okay and he says why i said because it's the principle of compound interest mm. if you're mm. making money on mm. compound interest by saving daily mm. which means if you're paying daily it's the same principle you reduce your mortgage and i mm. never knew i just said okay i'll do that mm. only to find out that god was preparing me for this uh, breaking exercise wow. whereby Wow. I didn't have to pay my mortgage for a whole year. So, of course, wow. shelter sorted out. They're not going to kick my wife out of the house. They're not going to kick my kids out of the house. Oh. So, mortgage sorted out. Now, private school. Two kids in private school. How do you deal with that? Oh. I said, you know what? Senior pastor again preached a message and said, you know, sometimes you have to confront your issues. I go to the school on a Monday. Um, booked an appointment with the finance team. Yeah. But of course, before then... He started talking about, I said, what did you do over the weekend? He said, harvest. I thought, harvest? This guy must be a Christian. I said, oh, I'm a Christian as well. I, I, I go to a local church down the road. He says, really, what are you doing? And from talking about the fact that I owed a lot of money, he now said, Mr. Jomo, you know, for you to come and sit down with me and tell me that you don't have money and you can't afford to pay must be very hard for you. Hmm. He says, let me give you some comfort. There are loads of people in this school right now that I've not paid for a year and they've not even come to speak to me. Wow. He says, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to speak to the board of trustees and I'm going to say, you know what? How much is the minimum amount he can pay per month? Right. Because all, all they're interested in is how much you can pay. Yeah. And then I just started paying the minimum. Wow. Of course, over the next, uh, I think, 14 months later, yeah. God now started to restore me. You know, I got certain contracts, but then see how God will break me. First, I first got one for one year. After two weeks, they said they don't need me. <laughs> then I got one for one year. After six months, they said they don't need me. But guess what, sis? As I round up the story on money, God had broken me to the stage that even right now, mm. money is not a distraction mm. because mm. I know that if, if God could take me through that period yeah. just to break that distraction of pride, yeah. Then, you know, people ask me, well, am I willing to go through it again? I says, if it's going to break a negative Any, habit in me, uh, 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 then I will, uh, you know. So, so you can see how money was a distraction in my life at that point in time. It, it brought a lot of chaos into my life. It brought a lot of distraction into my life. But then it had to be dealt with. But yours is slightly different, I think, because they're also... With regards to money as a distraction, there are also other men who will do anything just to make money. And they will get, I'm sure you've heard of some of your friends and people that you know who, in trying to meet the needs of the family, they will compromise. Is that something that you found? Yeah, but you know, if I, if I was to use my own example as a case study, yeah. you find out that the money, there's an underlying issue. Sometimes it's not the money. Mm. So, so men that would do anything to compromise is because they're trying to protect, you know, they're trying to bring security into their family. But right. the problem is, it's probably the wrong approach. Okay. Uh, for me, it took, it took God to break me and humble me to realize that, hey, it's not the amount of money that I earn mm. that's going to sustain my family. Mm. But it's the fact that, you know, rely on me. Yeah. It's me, not your money. Not your I mean, money, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, talking about humility, also during that period, a friend of mine in Canada told me, with this amount of money you have in the bank, why don't I buy property in Canada? I said, I beg, leave that one. So two opportunities whereby yeah. if I had invested in Canada, who knows, I may have, had, I may have a massive um, portfolio. But 
to be honest, I have no regrets because the arrogance that money at yeah. that point in time yeah. is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. For me, that's enough. Yeah. You know, yeah. so now it frees me to give. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think twice about giving. I don't think twice about certain things. On the, back then, I was looking at my bank balance every day saying, ah, I'm sorted. I'm sorted. <laughs> but no, that. And, and you realize that sometimes it's good to keep quiet, speak, uh, how did they say, speak less and listen more. Mm. Because when that guy was advising me to look for another contract, I didn't really need to say anything, did I? Mm. Mm. But in the arrogance of my heart, I said, I, I always, always get something. Yeah, I always get something. Not yeah. even God, is, I always get something. Wow. So. So God had to show you that, okay, let's see. Uh, he, 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 the distraction and the chaotic situation of money not being used the right way, he had to yeah, show you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Do you know, this thing that you said about the mortgage, it's interesting, I was on, um, I can't remember, I think it was somebody's um, IG Live or so last week, and this person was saying the exact thing that you said, that pay, if I, I think she said pay, um, she doesn't remember, pay twice a month, so instead of paying just the number, we we'll pay twice a month. But you was you talked about paying monthly. Yeah, what I, uh, what, sorry, I what he told me to do. Yeah, what he told me to do is yeah. in order to build because it's all about compound interest, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, mortgage companies charge you daily. Yeah. So it says okay, in order to reduce the amount of mortgage you have to pay going forward. Yeah. Pay is it it's going to be a big sacrifice, but you'll you'll um you benefit in the end. Yeah. Pay a whole month in arrears. So mm-hmm. yes, that's what she said. Yes, that's so what she So pay that. And then start paying weekly. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going, I think this is something I would love to do, um, a hangout thing about this, finance especially. I think it would be great for a lot of people to know that because this life thing that I was um, watching talked about how instead of paying, you know, most mortgages now, they say 25 years or depending on how old you are, that you can actually half it if you pay like that pay off yeah, um, it's possible company. but um, yeah. the, the mortgage companies i'm sorry to digress but okay we're still talking about money so mortgage companies wouldn't want you to do that because they lose on the interest payment so yes yes really, like, because they like, make um, such a lot when, of a lot of money from the interest yeah yeah i mean when i when i approached my mortgage company and said i want to be doing that they said oh no you know the admin issues stuff i said no worries i just canceled the mortgage and started paying by standing order mm, you mm. Know? and i learned i learned that at that point in time that sometimes it's not everything that they say, as long as it's not against the law, yeah. it's not. It's not against it's not. the law. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not. And the truth is that it's not. It's not that difficult to calculate because I was um, a mortgage advisor, so I know how to. Um, okay. Like I'm CMA certified. Uh, what's it called? I got a certificate in mortgage advice and. Um, okay. Physical. So I know how to calculate the interest. So it's not that difficult. It's actually yeah. not difficult, but they don't want you to do it because they're losing out on the interest. Yeah, that um, yeah. was fantastic. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, next, I'm still I'm still safe right now. You're still safe. You're is... still safe. It's still okay. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh, let me just reconfirm that flight ticket to uh, Bora Bora. <laughs> okay, sex. Let's talk yeah. about sex. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, you wanna? I, I think you're going to ask me a question. <laughs> Okay, let uh, me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Uh, because yeah, you have sorry, okay. you have children. Um, yeah. When do you think, before you go into your thing, actually, when do you think one should start talking about sex with children? Did you ever have your parents talk about sex with it? Nah. Nah, I, I didn't think so. I would have been surprised. Nada. Nada. Nah, nah. nah. I would have been surprised. Nah. Okay. So you, okay. Um, the, next question is, do, the next question you're gonna ask me, do I do I wish they had? And the answer would be yes, I yes, wish they did. Yes, <laughs> yes definitely. Yeah. So all the information you got about sex, where did that come from? Was it from your peers? Was it um, where did that where did you get all the information from? Put it this way, there was no internet there, so <laughs> so go figure. Go. I should go figure. Okay. <laughs> mm. uh, Okay. <laughs> boarding, boarding school, uni yeah. lag. You yeah. know, it's just, it's just, which is why I wish personally that we got it from the right. You know, we, we spoke earlier about knowledge, about focusing on, yes. on the right knowledge. I think yeah. a lot of us, if we're going to be honest as guys, we thought we knew about sex, but we knew Jack, <laughs> to be honest, because the source of information wasn't really, um, 
what you would say, user friendly or godly friendly. So mm -hmm. we just played it by ear, okay. you know. So okay, okay. So or let's like talk now, where where they have sex education and stuff like that, we never had that in in secondary school. Growing up, yeah. yeah. And yeah. our parents didn't. They didn't have a clue. No. It was a it was a, a, a subject of taboo <laughs> back then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about sex as a distraction. How did you find? How was sex a distraction for for you? Um, just like money could be a blessing or a curse mm -hmm. um, just like the, uh, sex can also be a blessing or it could be a curse okay. um, sex can be used as a manipulative tool yeah. um, um, I know we joke about the famous uh, elbow which is quite interesting because I was reading about Einstein the other day saying E is equal to MC square where M is equal to mass C is equal to velocity he said, well, sorry, I missed I would, that uh, Einstein. Sorry, Einstein. there was a break in transmission. Oh, so Einstein's law of relativity says E is equal to MC square. And I always joke, yeah. uh, you know, when, when, um, when sometimes when there's a message being given by a local pastor or, or where we go for couples, couples week and where we talk about the famous elbow. And I, I said, yeah. elbow is equal to MC square. That is the, the velocity <laughs> of the elbow when the wife says, no, not today. <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, so sex can be a blessing or a curse. Um, I think it can be used as a manipulative tool. And this is for the younger ones. And again, I'm just going to be real. The yeah. notion that when you marry, sex is going to be free-flowing on a platter. Uh, just uh, hold that thought and you confirm it 12, 20 years later whether it's free-flowing. And not that it's... I don't mean that it's a bad thing, but sometimes we get into this notion that, you know, when we get married, you know, it's like sex galore and, you know, it's free flowing and stuff like that. But in reality, I mean, there's, there's something that's helped me in consultancy. Um, it tells me that um, there's expectation and there's reality. Okay. And, and the difference between expectation and reality is disappointment. So mm. as, as your expectation is moving closer to reality, yeah, you find out that you won't be disappointed because reality is what you expect. So there's nothing to manage. What okay. you're expecting is what. But sometimes our expectations are far, far from reality, and then when it doesn't happen, we get disappointed. Right. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. What, yeah so, so so that that's helped me a lot. So let me relate it to what I'm talking about about now. Okay. Is that if you've been married for a long time, I'm sure you can relate to this. There could be times when there's no sex because of fights. Yeah. No sex because of fasting. Yeah. No sex because either your wife or your husband is sick or pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes there's no sex for no reason. You can't even understand why there's no sex. Yeah. But the bottom line is there's no sex. Yeah. So this is where the whole point or discussion of distraction and chaos comes in. Um, so what do you do when you find yourself in such a situation, uh, especially if you're like a consultant that travels every year, you spend a month <laughs> away, you spend two weeks away, you know, what do you do? Do yeah. you use that as an excuse to inject more chaos in your life? I mean, there have been loads of literature about the spiritual implication of adultery and fornication. So what do you do? Do you give it that as an excuse? Do you say, oh, because I fought my wife or because I'm fasting? Or because my husband's not interested, or because my wife's not interested, does is that a license to, mm -hmm. to 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 go and you know do the wrong thing? Yeah. But unfortunately, we know that in society right now, it's one of the major distractions and chaotic situations we find ourselves because you just need to go into the internet, go anywhere, and it's there. Yeah. So, going back to what that pastor said, how do you? How do you implement measures to prevent yourself from being in such a situation? Now, I'm sure you're going to ask me the question, have I ever felt tempted? 100%. That's what I was Why going not? to ask you, yeah. I'm, I'm going there. I'm, I'm, I mean, have I been tempted? <laughs> yes. Do I have measures in place? Of course. I'm not a stupid man. Okay. I am not going to, I am not going to mess up how many years of marriage or having three kids or where God has brought me. Just for, I mean, let's be real, for how many minutes of pleasure? I mean, but, will I, it, am I... Uh, I did. Look, well, you're, you're saying it as if it's very easy to have all these things. No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm going there. I'm not saying it's okay. easy. Okay. Okay. Hence why I, I said to you, 
uh, have I been tempted? But what you've not asked me is, is how far have I gone? Oh, okay. so so let's 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 get there. But I I just wanted to form the basis that you know this whole thing about sex that we talk about and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I, I'll tell you I'll tell you a story, uh, a true story. Um, and that's why I'm saying. Do you allow this as an excuse for you for it to govern your behavior? I was sitting down in the office um, one day, mm-hmm. and for some reason, something said "go home," and I said, oh, "I just need to to round up." Okay. Um, and then, out of nowhere, I heard this Italian voice at the back of me. Sweet, melodious Italian voice, <laughs> not the Italian lady speak, and something saying. Uh, Mr. Joma, I think you need not to look back and you need to start going home. Back your and of back, course, back it was, <laughs> Yeah, and meanwhile, it was one of those times where, you know, me and the wife had had a serious row and stuff like that, you know, vulnerability. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> let, let me just have a peek. <laughs> Some says, I don't think that's a good idea. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I now... You peaked. to the 60 degrees. <laughs> And I was doing some calculations um, on a spreadsheet. And the figures I was seeing there were not figures of <laughs> accounting. They were figures of a to- totally different uh, uh, um, persuasion. And I looked back again and I went, ah. And then something just took hold of me. I said, you know what? I ain't leaving this place today. <laughs> I'm staying here. If it's going to be me and this lady today, I'm going to stay here. Even if it's just to hear the voice. But I had enough strength. To pick up the phone. I have friends. I have accountability friends for every area of my life. Okay. Money, sex, and food. That okay. anytime I'm struggling, I can pick up the phone. That's fantastic. I won't mention his name. I picked yeah. up the phone. Mm-hmm. I said, your boy is about to, <laughs> to get himself in trouble. <laughs> and I explained to him what had happened. He said, this is not a case of you logging down and shutting off your laptop. He said, that's too much time. Leave your laptop, take your bike, and leave the office <laughs> right away. And he screamed at me, picked up my laptop, and um, got out of the building. And on the all the way home, I started praying. Yeah, you know, praying, saying wow. God, you know, blah blah blah, you know, stuff like this. Thank you for delivering me and stuff like that. And of course, I thought it was over. Get to the office the next day. Yeah, the lift opens. Yeah, I think I remember there's a lift one. Yeah. The lift, oh, no, the lift opens the next day. And guess who who's in the lift? The Italian lady that I saw yesterday. Oh wow! But wow. the problem is that because of my accountability partner, yeah, and the support and the prayers, yeah, I just saw her as an ordinary person. The voice didn't even it didn't even do anything for me because I, you know, I had. But you can imagine if I didn't have a so I, I didn't have boundaries. I didn't mm. have a support partner mm. at that moment of vulnerability. <laughs> Anything could have happened, <laughs> you know. And that's just one story. I I, I travel a lot. I, I, I remember you. Once. There was one you told me. Another lift one. Yeah, was no, this was Canada. I went to Canada, okay. and they called me from um, from the reception that the cleaner is coming to clean my room. Okay. I just woke up. I said, "I've just woken up." Blah blah blah. Okay, let her come. And the door opens, and I'm saying, "This one can't be a cleaner. <laughs> this one, this one can win any beauty contest." So I said to her, "Please, can you wait?" I went into my room. I dressed up and said, when you finish cleaning the apartment, just give me a call. And I went downstairs to the lounge. Now, people, you're going to ask me a question. It's because it's about managing expectation. Yeah. I've known that when you go on these trips, mm-hmm. of course, mm-hmm. temptations it's are going to come. But very what, easy, what are yeah. you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you yeah. doing to try and have measures in place to prevent yeah. these things from happening? Yeah. You know? yeah. and, and, and for me, one of the things I do, anytime I go on a project, in uh, abroad the first thing i do is i find a local church Fantastic. and i find friends wow. i find friends that are going to come i mean when i went to canada by the time top akishuku wali akishuku are calling you every week to say where are you where are you mm, you, mm. you can't even do it it's fantastic though yeah it's no well, choice I, because I, on, the... I, I must commend you sorry before you go on because the question i want to ask is how did you go about this where you knew to have accountability partners. And even to be, like the inc- uh, incident that happened, that you, because some people are like, ah, let me look again. And they won't call their accountability partner. But how did you get to that place where you knew, I have to do this, I have to do this? It, it, it goes back to, you know, you know I, I was saying to you many weeks ago that you, you begin to appreciate 
advice that people give you. You know, sometimes it stays in your subconscious and mm. it comes out at the right time. Mm-hmm. Now, I knew this just because of that informal discussion with the, with the pastor at the local church. Mm. When he said it then, he said, look, those three areas are your downfall. Mm-hmm. So I knew sex, uh, money. Okay, so it's knowing your, knowing your Achilles heel, so to speak. Yes, I mean, okay. I mean I'm going to say something now, you know, women that I don't hug shouldn't get it, get, get, uh, look at it and, and think, you know, I, I don't hug certain ladies in Jesus' house. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, everybody, you know, your Achilles heel. It's a yeah. shake. Some yeah. I can hug, I will feel it. Some I just, you know, people can make fun and say, oh, ah, yeah. but hey, it works for me. Mm. You know, mm. it works for me. I, mm. Everybody needs to know where your boundaries are. Yeah. You know, yeah. some people, yeah. you can lock them in a room with, with naked women and they won't even feel anything. You know, the mm. devil only tempts you in the areas where you're weak. Mm. You're not going to mm. tempt you. If, you, if if I love ice cream, of course, it, it, every 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 bowl of ice cream is going to look nice to me. Yeah. But if yeah. I hate ice cream, you can't tempt me with ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the most powerful scriptures is the truth set you free. Once you acknowledge what your weaknesses are, then you start building up boundaries to make sure that these things are no more distractions. I, oh. I have a friend, I won't mention his name. Um, he was going to a bank. Okay. And there was a lady there that he was attracted to. And he was telling me, oh man... How do I escape this? I said, change your bank. <laughs> God, I mean, could you, you know, I don't know whether he did change his bank, but it's like you go there the first time, second and third time, and, mm. you know, the feelings are still there. It's just mm. simple. Close the bank account yeah. and open up another. Is it easy to do? Of course not. But, <laughs> hey, you know, um, you, 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 you've got to look at the repercussions. Some, you know, some of these things have long-term consequences. Yeah, yeah. What you said, I just remembered one, um, a friend of us who said, um, I think it was counseling somebody, and he said, okay, so what do you do if a woman walks into your room and she's naked? So somebody said, I, I said to her, put on your clothes. Come on, put on your clothes. Then the other person said, I will run out of the room. Because in the process of saying, put on your clothes, she will, might come to you, but the best thing to do, like just said, is just to run and not to wait. To yeah, but it, it, it's not just that. If you're in a country like America, where where uh, Canada, where that thing happened to me, yeah. it's not even the case of running. If you yeah. stay there and she turns around and says you tried to rape her, what, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That's you know, true. What are you going to do? Um, you know, um, so in. It, once I knew that I, I was weak in certain areas, I mean, yeah. and when I talk about the weakness on the sex side, it's not that I want to, you know, jump into bed with every, yeah. every yeah. woman or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, guys will tell you that there's a certain, there's a certain, sometimes there's an, attra- there's a, um, an aroma of attraction that yeah. a woman can, similar to a guy. I mean, I'm not going to speak on behalf of women, but I'm sure, you know, they, it, 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 it works for you guys as well. And you guys probably have, the ways in which you're dealing with it. And yeah. Everybody has their own way of dealing with it. But you got to admit the truth. You know, we're yeah. living in a society whereby it's all over the place. You know? yes. I don't watch certain programs because, yeah. you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be waking up in the middle of the night and all kinds of things, you know, <laughs> and people may be listening and going, ah, you know, get a hold of yourself. But hey, as I said, I'm not here to please anyone. I'm here mm-hmm. to protect myself. Mm-hmm. I'm here to protect my family. You know, yeah. I have a son. Yeah, I don't want to transfer any any <laughs> anything that's a weakness in me to him. So that's yeah. why you know I I try and talk to him regularly about this thing. They they're more exposed to this thing than us. You know, yeah. That's why I said earlier I would have loved for my dad to sit me down and tell me about the pros and cons of these things. But unfortunately, you know, everybody has his lane to 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 to. Move but on. at least you're having conversations about sex with your son now. Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> no, because is it even um, just on a serious note, though, I personally think um, that we should, as parents, um, get to the place where we're having conversations about sex with our children and earlier on, too, so that they learn. Because also, um, I, think, I think, I'm not sure if it's the same thing with women, but with young boys, you know, when they start to feel those things um, at an early age, you have to be able to tell them how to handle it. So mm-hmm. it's not just, it's not porn that they're uh, not watching mm-hmm. or trying to act it out with um, other ladies. So we need to, as parents, um, start to have those conversations. Yeah. And if it's <laughs> difficult for us as parents, then maybe get, we'll get help from someone or other people who are professionals who can do it um, for us. Yeah. 
Yeah. And let me let me say something as well. And and it works both ways because um I I know I know there's been discussions about how um how the situations where as husbands you feel that maybe your wife is respecting other guys, showing more care and concern for other guys than you, and vice versa, where um, so I said wife, where husbands are showing more concern, the way they treat other women yeah. compared to their wives is different. Yeah. And I've always said that the greatest challenge is that if if the relationship is full of fight and it's I know it's difficult, yeah. but the long term consequences of that is is very dangerous because at the end of the day, um, God said to death do us part. And if you find yourself as a woman, sorry, if, if, if I find myself as a, as a man or a husband and I'm mm. treating other women better than my wife, then that's, that's, a, that's a chaotic and destructive situation which is going to backfire on me. So regardless mm. of whether, you know, there are fights in the house or we don't get on, number one fundamental prayer is that, Lord, regardless give me the grace to respect my wife, no. regardless whether she's a hothead, whether she's yeah. this, whether she's that, yeah. whether we're not getting on. Because yeah. that's where this sex thing comes in. Because once you start showing care for another woman, you yes. never know where it's going to yeah. get to, and yeah. vice versa. Yeah. So yeah. that's part of the boundary, is yeah. that regardless of what's going on, yeah. treat your wife better than any other woman. Mm. Treat your mm. husband better than any other husband. Yeah. Because if not, you're just opening the door yeah. to this you know, distraction on the sex bit, you know, Absolutely. so you just have to have boundaries, you know. Absolutely. And you know, one of, one of the things Dr. Onyozo um, always says is that, you know, as you may be, we're waiting for, if you do this for me, then I'll do that. If you show me respect. Yeah. But he says that, you know, when you're being judged, you're not going to be judged at what the other person didn't do. You're going to be judged at what you did. Did you do, yeah. did you treat your wife well? It doesn't matter yeah. even if she's not, or did you treat your husband well? So it's not yeah. about what they didn't do, it's about what you do. But, yeah, I do. I mean, we went for, <laughs> I'll never forget this. We went for one of this Joe Elias deliverance. I don't know what he calls it. It's yeah. Sorted out. Yeah, sorted out. And um, he said, before we start anything, if uh, any of you are not talking to your mom, call her. And for me, it wasn't an issue because, but then he said, I don't even care if your mom's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you call her because what he was saying was that, like you said, it's not about the character traits of the mm, other person. Mm. It's about you as a person. Yeah. And that's yeah. why if you notice at the start of this uh, discussion point, the key words was how do you manage yourself yeah. uh, in, a, yeah. in an environment of chaos and distraction? Yeah. Because yeah. you can't run the race of someone else. Absolutely you're not a change not. agent. It's, Absolutely. It's up to the, and it's one of the mistakes, I'll be honest, I'll, I mean, hands on, one of the mistakes I made in the past is that, you know, like, I, like Lulu said, you know, we I tended to be uh, uh, somebody that wanted to please everyone. Okay. So my, my, my character trait wasn't the real idea of Jomo. I would be able to speak openly like this years and years and years ago. Oh, oh. I would be afraid. I'd be like, oh, am I upsetting anybody? But if the truth is going to set me free as a person, if I want my wife or my children to see the real person in me, yeah. it's a risk. Yeah. You know, it's a risk that one has to take. But at least... You know you're giving them the real version, like like Lulu said. <laughs> you're not giving them a ghost. They wake yeah. up one day and they say, "Ah, <laughs> well, you know." Like Eminem said, "Who is the real Slim Shady?" Yeah. <laughs> so, so food. So wait, before we go into that, um, I want to talk about men and their fathers just briefly, because I'm wondering whether some of the challenges men have stems for, from not having a relationship or their father's not showing them emotions. Would you think that, and then the other question I was going to ask you is, are you an emotional person? <laughs> I, I can't get emotional, yeah. I won't, I won't. I'm surprised I actually didn't cry during the story of the money because normally when I share that story with people, I'm, I just break down because, really? you know, the way God broke me down Wow. Um, I, 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 to be honest, I thank God that I never got to a stage where I was suicidal. Wow. Because it was a tough time. Yeah, it was a tough time. And I think what helped me during that period was, was a lot of friends, guys that made sure. I mean, I don't, you know, I asked you for the protocol of the show, so I, yeah. I don't want to mention the name, but he yeah. knows. If he's listening now, he knows. I just, I just want to... Uh, 
Mm. I just want to thank God for his life because mm. Right. Because it uh, it must have been a lot. No, it was it tough. It, it was tough. Eighteen months, yeah. a man, and then you had yeah, bills it, to pay. It was tough. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It, it was tougher, but he he was my support. If you could find somebody that's loyal as a friend, I mean, mm. every Friday we were in church, eleven wow. to one. If he's listening, he knows. <laughs> wow. And I got a job, and he still didn't have a job after that. But he we still kept talking. But now he's working and he's fine. His wife's working now, fine. So. But uh, I, I know, I know I had to go through that thing for a purpose. But mm. yeah, so I do get emotional sometimes. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. 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 Whew. Well, we thank God. We thank God. Um, so yeah, the question was, apart from the emotional, do you think that some of yeah. the challenges men have with um, either marriage, themselves, ego, and all of that, Whatever issues it is, is it? Do you think it stems from their relationship or not having a relationship with Father Figo? Um, I can speak on my behalf. Um, yeah. As you know, I lost my dad last year. Yeah. I grew very close to him um, in the latter years of his life, and and for me, I think if I had a, cl- I'm not saying I wasn't close to him, but certain issues I never discussed with him, like marriage, money. And all those things we're talking about, I never sat down and spoke to him about those things. And I'm thinking, if I did, it probably would have helped a lot. Okay. Um, I think it would have helped me a lot because yeah. towards the latter years of his life, he was giving me certain advice in those areas, okay. which wow. were, which helped me quite a lot, especially yeah. in the area of money. Yeah. Where I said to him one day, I never forget it. I said, "Daddy, why don't you guys have Sky TV in in Owo, in the village?" He <laughs> said, "Son." I have a list of priorities that that I write down weekly. Mm-hmm. Sky TV is not a priority. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's a valid saying about you need to know what is of priority and work your way down. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember one time I said, oh, I don't like you flying in, Ni- in Nigeria, but you know, I'm coming to Lagos. Why don't you come by public transport? <laughs> and he said, look, if you give me that money, I'm not going to fly. I'm going to use it to sort out my priority right. list. And I'm thinking, if this guy gave me this advice when I was young, it would have helped me regarding finances. And yeah. um, issues like, um, you know, learning when to keep quiet, learning when to let things slide. Um, right. You know, yeah. And I think, um, since you mentioned her name, and she said something which was similar to the advice he gave me some time ago, that life is about two choices. Do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? Mm. No, mm. the decision is yours. Yeah, you could be right, but are you going to be happy with that happy, decision? Yeah. Or yeah. you could be happy. So, and 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 and, and that's something he, he sort of related to me towards the latter year. So, mm. the answer to your question is, I think having a father that can advise you as young as possible yeah. is is well, worth definitely. a lot. Mm. And that's why I can I feel for those younger ones that don't have a father figure. Yeah. And that's why this mentoring scheme that yourself and Dr. are doing, I think, may the Lord continue to, you know, Amen. expand and make it relevant because I, I think it's needed. Amen. I think it's needed, yeah. Thank God. Okay, thank you, Mr. John. Folks, please, if you have questions for him, put the questions in the question. You know, there's this icon that has a question mark. Please just click on that and put the questions there because you guys might have questions for him. So let's go on to the next bit. For those who joined us late, we've talked about the distractions of money. We've just finished talking about the distraction of sex. And now we're going to talk about the distraction of food. I'm I'm, I'm actually surprised about this (laughs) one, but... (laughs) Uh, uh, Food, yeah. Um, The reason why why I want to talk about this one is, is, again... Uh, it's quite interesting that you brought up this whole idea of uh, fatherly advice when you're yeah. young. Yeah. And um, if we're going to be honest, especially a lot of us that were brought up in Africa, yeah. um, there's, always, there's always this notion that when it comes to food, that, you know, quote and unquote, it's not, a man's place is not in the kitchen. Mm. That, mm. you know, um, you, you know, that when it comes to food, it's the wife that has to cook. You yeah. know, she has to make sure that there's food, blah, blah, blah. But then when you come to the UK or your wife is working, you begin to realize that hmm, 
something doesn't quite add up. Mm-hmm. You know, you both come at eight o'clock and you're going to lie down on the couch and she has to go into the kitchen and uh, cook food and stuff like that. And it's been the bane and it's been the distraction caused by many fights, you know. Oh, you should be in the kitchen and stuff like that. I mean, uh, I was of that school of thought before. Okay. Um, you know, earlier in my marriage, I was of that school of thought. But at that point in time, of course, um, my wife was cooking. There was no issues. Yeah. But <laughs> when, well, when for some reason, your wife can't cook for various reasons. I mean, yeah. some of it is draining. Some could be any any reason, tiredness yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You now realize that you can shout all you want. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> You're just going to starve. Um, and then you begin to realize when you when you when you when you actually are honest with yourself, and you say to yourself, "Is it fair?" Mm. You know, you mm. begin to now begin to, and then I think for me, what delivered me from from that was the scripture that said, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God." Mm-hmm. And that it's it's not about food. It's not about food. And the question is simple: that you know, when it comes to food, um, if for some reason your wife says she can't cook or she's tired, are you going to let the whole family starve? Are you going <laughs> to let your kids starve? You know, these are, are, are questions you begin to, 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 to ask yourself. Yeah. Um, and then you've got two choices at that point in time. You try to continue to force her to cook, and then fights happen, distractions happen, you're hungry, you can't make decisions, you go to work hungry, blah, blah, blah. And it, these things, they bring chaos, they bring a lack of order, they bring a lack of structure, right, because of food. And we, we see one of the best examples that delivered me from that thing was Jacob and Esau. I mean, mm. <laughs> like, like my wife would say, who does that? Mm-hmm. Where you sell your birthright for, for, a, for a plate of asaro. <laughs> a plate of asaro, you sell your birthright. But the difference is that Jacob, his thought pattern was strategic. Yeah. yeah. It was, he, he, had, he thought way ahead that yeah. it's just a pot of asaro. I'll cook it for him. Mm-hmm. But I know the consequences of me cooking that pot of asaro. But for Esau, it was for the moment, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I said to myself, am I going to allow the fact that either my wife doesn't cook or my kids don't cook or there's no food in the house, am I going to allow that to mess up my future? No. Mm. So you look in my phone, Mama Cass, delivery, <laughs> delivery, and stuff like that. And like my friend said, not only will you go out with the guys to eat, make sure you order for the whole family when you're mm, back. Mm, mm, I mean, food yeah. in the whole scheme of things, food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and but it's because of the mindset that we were. Yeah, like someone said, home. Nigerian uh, mentality or African. I don't know. Maybe yeah. not just Nigerian because we have other people. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, I really didn't think about it like that. Um, Taya agrees with you. It's one of the most serious distractions. Interesting. Wow, it is. Uh, yeah, but, so for, so I, I'm glad that I sort of got over that earlier. And it's like, I began to question myself, do I actually really believe in that philosophy that a woman's place is in the kitchen just because in Africa, they say, they, you know, I'm always seeing my mom cook or whatever. Yeah. But incidentally, yeah. incidentally, I should have known better because my dad was a very good cook. Okay, okay. It was a very good, even though he never cooked, but he was a very good cook. And I remember he had a row with, with his wife. I mean, <laughs> I still remember my brother that story. And she, she was like raking that day, saying, ah, oh, you know, I'll see you. He just went into, into the kitchen, cooked a bag, cooked a first stew and stew. And it was even better than the one that she cooked. <laughs> and I thought, oh, no wonder this guy, no wonder this guy, no wonder he doesn't, he doesn't uh, get worried about food. Food is not a distraction for him. He would just go in the kitchen and cook, you know. But as I said, I think for me, the story of Jacob and Esau is what sort of delivered me, you know, where somebody is selling his life or his birthright. Or a wall out, yeah. It goes into your stomach and it goes out and that's it. And, he, you know, his birthright, and even when he was begging his father, it was too late. So yeah. the question I ask myself is, do I want to mess up my life because there's no food in the kitchen? Yeah. It's, it's just now. Nah. And, you know, like um, Collie has just put, we really need to teach our sons how to cook. So when the wife can't cook, and, you know, it's not just sometimes it's not just, oh, she doesn't want to cook. Something, she could be ill, you know, some, anything, for any reason. If there's no food, then the man should be able to get into the kitchen and cook. And if he can't, mm-hmm. order, order food. In fact, that's, um, Dr. Nunes always says that 
if your wife doesn't cook, it's not a problem. Get a cook if you can, if you can afford it. If not, order food. The people who will buy, who will cook for you for the month or week, and put them in small bowls, put it in the um, freezer, and you eat. You know. And yeah, but it, but it, it it relates to what you were talking about earlier about how we bring up our younger ones because yeah. when we. You know, I'm not trying to use an excuse. When you look at the background that we were brought yeah. Um, yeah. up in, yeah. you know, certain things you hang on to, yeah. you know, any words that come out of your father's mouth or your, your mother's side, you hang on to those things. Yeah. And it forms the basis of your upbringing. And Absolutely. like I said earlier, when we spoke about the whole, the whole concept of um, distraction and chaos at the beginning, is that yeah. it took God to bring Jesus back to say, you know what, these guys need a standard. They need a standard yeah. of knowledge, understanding and wisdom to look up to. So yeah. they get it right. It's the yeah. same way that when we were growing up as young people, I looked at, when it came to sex, I couldn't talk to my dad about it. When it mm. came to money, I couldn't. When it came to food, you know, you ate whatever <laughs> was cooked. So yeah. you didn't really have somebody to guide you along those lines. Yeah. But mm. like, you remember Maslow's, Maslow's Law of Hierarchy says there's certain needs that we need. You can't avoid it. Mm. Money, food, and sex, yeah. unfortunately, are some of those needs. Yeah. So as a young person growing up, who do I turn to? I turn to our, our boys. I turn to the lads. So whatever they tell you about sex is what you yeah. say. Whatever they yeah. tell you about money, yeah. you know, if they tell you, you know, the only way to make money is by robbing a bank, then that's mm. what you're going to do. Yeah. So this is yeah. where this mentoring scheme and all these, all these various source, sources of light, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom yeah. are very handy because, you know, sorry to go back, just one meeting of 40 minutes back in my local church years ago where yeah. I've been told as a man, whether married or not, you need must, must, master, is it mastery? Mastery? Yeah. I can't pronounce it now. Mastery. And discipline. Mm. Mastery and discipline in three key areas yeah. to avoid distraction and chaos in your life is something mm. I've been holding on to. Wow. Now, do I always get it right? No, no. I told you, my disclaimer, I'm not perfect. I did break out, Jomo. Yeah. is not a perfect creation, but I'm yeah. trying to get there through this yeah. growth process. Yeah. So, wow. Well done. Go. Well done. You know, the more I think about it, the more I just think, even for me as a parent, I didn't do too well. Because I'm thinking, there's so many things one could have taught our children when they were growing, when they were, well, I could have taught my children when they were younger. But for those who have young children now, it's not too late to please try to, you know, teach them all these things that we've been talking about. Have, um, talk about sex, talk about money, talk about, well, even food. And, you know, for me, <laughs> then another thing is even, Oh gosh, I just remembered. We need to teach our children at home how to behave outside. Because you don't want someone outside to teach them how to behave. That is so key. You know, simple things like you get up, you make your bed. If you stay with someone, you know, the things that you, you do, watch the household, how they, how they behave. So many lessons, so many things we need to teach our children. But please, let's start now. It is not too late. It is not too late. We can start that now and um, change their lives by the grace of God. But Adi, you have been absolutely amazing. And thank you again for being vulnerable. Um, okay, do you have okay. a... I think, can, can I tell the, my flight ticket now? Do you think I'm safe enough? <laughs> you're to... safe. Oh, <laughs> I think you're safe. She's not going to drive you. I know my sister. She's not going to drive you. She's not going to drive you. My, my kids and my wife will not drive me. Okay. No, no, no. But I think the truth is that every single one of I'm us... Kidding, we, I'm kidding. We can relate huh? to everything. I'm sure the men, the women um, here, every one of us, we can relate to every single thing that you said. And um, yeah, the men will agree with you. Every single thing that you said, and even the women, we can all relate to what you said. Yeah, I, mean, like, I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, uh, you get to a stage in your life where it's really not about trying to gain brownie points. It's just yeah. about, like Dr. Zoe said, you know, making yourself happy. Yeah. Uh, like Lolo. In fact, I, I'm glad that I listened to the Lolo Akibe's session with you last week. Yeah. Because he said, I, I, I recommend even women to listen to that thing. Yes. Because yeah. in his vulnerability, he, he opened himself fully. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a bold move. I mean, he, you know, once he identified that fact, and I think what made it, um, what made it gold was when he said, he knows that there's going to be a lot of sacrifice he has to make for the mm. real, for the real Lolo to come out, you know, like yeah. friendships, some yeah. friendships have to go. Yeah. He even mentioned his lifestyle has to change yeah. and he yeah. mentioned certain things. It's very hard for a guy to come on 
and say that yeah media yeah. and say what he said yeah. i never knew he was like he, he was going through those things so yeah. you know i'm 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 happy i listened to him yeah. so um, folks so, in, uh, let me say this yeah. now if you missed last week's um, hangout session please go to the link in the bio and click on the youtube link so last week was weathering the storms of life it was fantastic it was really really good um, mm-hmm. lily was it was just vulnerable and we really do appreciate him and we appreciate you too, Mr. Jones. Oh. My, thank you. You've been it's that good. A- anytime, anytime. But I just want anytime. you to leave us with, um, in two minutes or so, leave us with a final word for the main folks, women. Just a final word. Um, I think, you know, going back to, going back to the beginning, yeah. is that unfortunately we don't live in a perfect world. Mm-hmm. Um, imperfection means that every single day there's going to be chaos and distractions in in, in all the areas that I mentioned. Um, yeah. I mean, I just spoke about money, sex, and, and food today, but they're different. It's going to be chaos at work. How do you handle chaos and distractions at work? How do you handle the politics at work? Yeah. Uh, how do you handle all these things? And I think for me, once you, once you accept the fact that you're dealing with imperfect people, imperfect countries, imperfect governments, it actually lifts the burden off you because you say to yourself, who are you trying to impress? Oh. But the question is, do you, do you now say because there's imperfection, use that as an excuse? No. Yeah. But then that's where the growth process comes in. The growth process is God taking you to get to that state of perfection, which yeah. we know, to be honest, based on scripture, it will be when he finally comes down. So final word, enjoy the ride. You know, oh, enjoy the ride. Be yourself and enjoy the ride, you know. Don't try and impress anyone. And like I say to my son that, you know, don't allow anyone to rob you of your happiness. It's the mm. greatest service mm. you can do. Mm. I mean, I, I was speaking to him the other day. I said, look, you're, you're going to do your A-levels. Mm-hmm. And I said to you, don't get A-stars because of me or your mom or your sister. Oh, I love get that. Get A-stars because, get a star. I said, go for it. He's not going to fail. But let me use a, a random example. Let's say Joe Bloggs failed. Yeah. And that Joe Blog was my son, not Yanu. Um, I, him getting F9 it doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to love him even more you know I'm not going to say because you got that and that's what I said to him I said I want you to focus on your studies but I don't want you to focus on your studies at the back of your mind saying oh if I don't do well my parents no, 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 no. not back in the days when you know our parents would say ah you want to come into my house with F9 oh, today. you know that kind of thing but just be free read and enjoy the subject yeah. you know so it takes a lot of pressure of you when you're in a position where you don't have to impress people i think the only person it does. Been told to it impress, does. Yeah. yeah i think the only person we've been told to impress is god yeah and god in his in his infinite wisdom knows that these are guys are a bunch of imperfect people but my it grace does. abounds yeah and that's what's helped me because like yeah. lulu i can relate to everything that lulu said yeah. that was my weakness when i was very young yeah. you know to impress people you know, it, it, it developed a lot of insecurity in me, you know, trying to impress people, trying to say the right words, trying to say this. And do you but know, too much wahala. I did. Do you know the people you're trying to impress or we try to impress? They're probably in the same shoes. Yeah. It's just yeah. that we pick up, we don't yeah. see. Yeah. And they say, once you think that way, then it, it makes you stop condemning people. Yeah. You know, it makes you yeah. stop criticizing people, stop, yeah. makes you stop criticizing governments because yeah. you're saying to yourself, in, in perfect, imperfect creation, trying to advise another imperfect creation mm, is, mm, it doesn't make some mess. so yeah I, I guess yeah. that that's it really that's it's it. all about managing expectations of where you are yeah you know. i think the, the, also, yeah. <laughs> the key takeaway for me um one of some of the things that you said is having godly friends prayerful friends accountability partners getting mentors those mm. are so i think those are quite important they really are. Can I say one more thing? Can yes. I say one more thing based yeah. on what you said? Yeah. The reason why I have that support circle yeah. of friends that I call. Yeah. When I call them, I say, look, it's not just about prayer. You mm. can pray, mm. but give me practical advice. So like mm. the one that PWC, you yeah. said, OJ, if I just said pray, mm. I'll tell you, I'll still be in the office. Yeah. He said, he said, leave your laptop and yes. get out. Yeah. And he wasn't even, he wasn't even going, oh, don't. <laughs> he just said, let me, let, me, he let said, me pray with you. No, no, no. He said, he said, he was not speaking in Yoruba, so I don't want to keep speaking in Yoruba. He said, this one is not about laptop. This one is about your future. Get out of that office now. 
Thank God for just, white I, friend. I, I just, I just said, okay, I hear. I just left. <laughs> oh, you know, you know what she did was so, so good because another friend would put us said, "You're a man. You're a man. You know, you can resist, resist, resist. Flee, flee." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, oh my uh, I thank God for, for friendship. So, you, you, you need, it's, it, as a guy, you need, it's not, this is not about, oh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, like you said, it's about having accountability. Partners partners, because partners, some, yeah. some of your friends have experienced yeah. these things before. Yeah, and yeah. they're giving you proper advice on yeah. how to deal with situations. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if I was standing there saying I'm a man now, I'm sure I won't, you, I won't even be doing uh, that happy now. I'll probably be, you know, <laughs> divorced or something because, you know, you would have committed. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, is the, uh, and the question is: Is this kind of thing going to happen in the future? Of course, it will. Mm. But experience teaches you how to deal with it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 Wow. I don't um, thank you so much again. We really do appreciate your vulnerability. We appreciate you loads and loads and loads, folks. Please, can you show him some love and hugs? Just to let him know that we appreciate <laughs> him. And I'll go back again to say that. You need to watch last week's Hangout Cafe um, session with Lulu Akinbe. Amazing. You need to watch this again with um, Adi Ojomo. Amazing. And when you guys watch this video on YouTube, please, can you like the video? Please, 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 please. And share the video and let people know how amazing this platform is. <laughs> Even if I, say so I, I, I just want to thank <laughs> all those that have tuned in. Um, <laughs> I, I, again, I just want to know. I know Saturday can be busy for everyone, so yeah. I just yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it's not uh, everything I've spoken about is really not about me. It's about what God, God can do with any yeah. individual. Um, yeah. If not for God, uh, I don't think I'll be here saying what I'm saying now. True, I mean, True. He True. had to break this arrogant little boy. <laughs> so, I don't care how much money you have in the bank accounts. <laughs> I am the daddy here. <laughs> Thank, thank you, you Mr. Jobs. And thank you, family, <laughs> Hangout Cafe family. You guys are just simply the best. Thank you so much for, you know, your consistency. Come in every Saturday to join us. We really, really, I appreciate you. Um, love you all very, very much. And Mr. Jobs again, God